Hello, welcome to Radio Waves by Totterbert. If you enjoy reviews, comparisons, band scans of new and classic portable radios, plus do-it-yourself kits, then please subscribe and tap the bell icon so you don't miss any of my future videos. In front of us, we have the Matchbox Crystal Radio, imported from my favorite crystal radio kit builder out of the UK. He goes by TGS1950. I'll do a little pop-up here uh, on his eBay name. He's really cool. He's got all these different kits, and he's always designing new things. And I'm just, I am love I love following his uh, items. He's got some neat stuff, and I'm looking to get a couple more kits from him. And just amazing. I've had this kit for a little while, and it's about time we go over it and build it together. Now, I believe he stopped making this particular one, or he's got a break. Uh, he does have a really cool Cape Cod uh, Crystal Radio kit, which is uh, credit card based, which has a similar setup, but just a little bit bigger and easier to work on. So let's go ahead and show you this one here. So yeah, I think this was $15 and that Cape Cod Crystal Radio kit, I'll link down below in the description. Uh, that particular one sells, I think, for like $17. Pretty cool experience. If you have basic soldering skills, you'll have no trouble putting these kits together and enjoying them. Especially do, like doing a science fair project with your son or daughter will be a neat thing. Or yourself, you know, getting back into uh, crystal radio listening, which is really a cool, cool thing. You know, free, free power radio. I love it. So let's go ahead and open the box up. See what we get. So I know we got instructions here, which we're going to go over. I'm going to kind of use this as a backdrop. It helps my camera focus. And I'll empty the contents out. Oops, get everything out of there. All right, so let's go ahead and go over parts. First thing he gives us is the aerial antenna. This is probably pretty good outside. It looks like a stainless steel wire. You know, clip one of your alligator clips to this, and then you string this out to a tree or to a post. Um, kind of nice. I have an indoor wire strung up already. But you really want something long, uh, especially for a crystal radio set. Um, I think back when I was really into it huge, and I had some bigger sets, I was I had like a 100-foot wire strung up, <laughs> and it was nice. It worked out really well. I heard a lot of stations really loud and clear, so always good to think of a bigger aerial in the future if you're not happy with the supplied one. Okay, next we have alligator clips to hook up to the aerial and to the board, and then we have a ground wire. You can hook up to your ground. Um, I have a longer wire in my house attached to a water pipe, so it works out real well. This is nice. You don't need to solder these to the alligator clips. There's nice little um, bend over tabs that lock the wire pretty tight. All right, next we have the earpiece. It includes this. That's nice. Good to have that. I think you can buy these separately on eBay for like three bucks a piece. But it's nice this is included. And then we have our parts bag. So let me go ahead and empty these parts out and we'll go over each one here so you have an idea what we got. So first one. I'm going to put on the white background here. It helps my camera focus. This is the headphone jack, our earphone jack. So pretty simple. Plastic. So when you do these, uh, solder them. This might be nylon, uh, but just go quickly on the legs. You don't want to spend too much time on them. You don't want to melt um, the housing. Uh, so go really fast with your iron. You know, don't spend much time there when you're soldering those legs on. Uh, next we have the variable capacitor. So you get one of these little bad boys. Uh, so it's a single single tuning one. The Foxhole radio kit that I reviewed, it had two of them. All right, next we have some inductor coils. Here we go. We got two different values. Um, I think it's a, one's a 220, one's a 470 uh, micro Henry. So I'll go ahead and uh, when we look at the instructions. It'll talk about the values. But you get two of those, and there's a switch. Um, you can make it, uh, there's a little jumper that you can switch between the two. That's nice. So you get the two different ranges. Cool. Um, we get the resistor for the earpiece. Okay, real basic stuff there. Uh, let's see what all the cool part is this. The germanium crystal. And this is really cool. Maybe a good close-up of that. Yeah, that's your detector, and that helps uh, you get the signals. These are really nice. I don't know what uh, quality these are. He says they're Russian-grade, military-grade. I don't know what that is, but I do know they work really well. Uh, probably one of the best diodes I've used. And there's a bunch of different kinds you can get, you know, if you're searching eBay and stuff. There's the cheap Chinese ones, and there's these. There's the old-fashioned style with the leaded ends. But um, this particular one, I, I've noticed, is a really good performer. So I'm glad he includes that. Uh, here's the little simple jumper block for switching between, between the two inductors. So that'll be easy to solder in. And then it looks like we have two little posts. One to hook up your ground and one to hook up to aerial. 
So instead of just going to the board, you can clip right to the post. Those are kind of interesting there. First time I've run into these, so I'm going to put those on the board. Cool. And then the board itself. Let's go look it over. Here it is. It's a little guy. <laughs> That's why it's called the Matchbox Crystal Radio, because this will fit into a Matchbox. I think I might have shown you this before, but this can go in there no problem if I want to do that. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm not going to. I'm not sure what I'm going to do for the future. I like to build it into something a little different, something clear so you can see the whole thing. I don't know if I want to hide it in something like this. So I'm looking around for little project boxes clear. But here you go. Here's a layout. You can see where everything goes. Um, L1, L2, air inductors. Here we have the diode, resistor, headphone jack. We have the jumpers. Uh, yeah, so this, this is going to work out really good. Here's your terminals. So, yeah, fun fun little project. Can't wait to put this together. Um, backside, you can see where the they're nice tinned area where you'll be able to solder to very easily. I don't see any issues. Uh, Dimension-wise, this is 1 and 7 eighths of an inch across. One and a quarter inches high and a thickness of sixteenth of an inch. So it's pretty small. So for size comparison, this is pretty funny. Um, let me see what I got handy here. Here we go, Texan. <laughs> here we go, size comparison. Look at that. <laughs> so cool. Alrighty. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go fade to black here. We're going to go ahead and assemble this. When I come back, I'll have it all put together. And we'll talk about how it went. Alright guys, be back in a moment. Hello, and I'm back. It was a relatively easy build, and here are the instructions. I didn't get to show you earlier, but uh, we'll go over them. There's the board, showing the placement of all the components. Two different inductor coils. You can pause and read this if you'd like. This is a power-free radio, and all the power to drive the earpiece is derived from the power of the received signal. <laughs> it's cool, you know, a lot of people don't know how these things work. It's kind of a neat uh, experience. And uh, I'll put a link up here to the do-it-yourself uh, kit where you don't need to solder, the solderless one. So if you want to get into crystal radios but you don't know how to solder anything, uh, check that kit out. It's really cool. Um, so there's the value of the resistor. This is kind of neat. It gives you all these different things. And you could probably build your own, you know, using his circuit diagram. Um, and you could probably, you know, wire something up. And I'm thinking about doing something like that on my own too, just to experiment and see. And I'll feature it on this channel too. <laughs> Uh, here we go. Selected Russian military Germanian diode. So it uh, can be connected either way, which is nice. Here are the two inductors, 220 and 470. Uh, of course, they're values by the uh, markings on there, and I'll show you that to you. Tuning capacitor. Uh, we have 9 to 50 picofarads. Approximate frequency range is 1 to 3.5. Um, this actually worked. <laughs> we'll go over that. Um, output, we have the Crystal earpiece, real sensitive. Talks about soldering before. Ensure the plastic pins in the base are located. Yeah, so that, that was the one tricky part there. And we'll talk about that. There's the pins to connect. And there you go. So pretty simple. Yeah, there you go. If you want to contact him, he's got his email address there. So yeah, um, pretty cool kits. Um, but yeah, like I said, check out all this information. I'll have it in the description details too. Um, pretty cool guy. Nice kits, I love it. So let's go look at this little guy, it's cool. So one relatively quick, let me see if I can zoom in a little. <laughs> Not too much, I'm gonna bump into the camera. So there is the Matchbox Crystal Radio. Look how small that is. That is like little dinky guy. <laughs> so you have your uh, aerial and earth connections. You can uh, put them vice versa and see what work, works best for you. For me, the earth and aerial. How he has it works the best. Here you can change the values of the inductors. Uh, here's your capacitor to help try to tune out stations. I got about three stations, and they're kind of like bled over each other. Um, I think I mainly my local 670, 720, 780, but I expected that. Here we have the resistor for the earpiece. Here is the earpiece socket, and that's plastic. You had to go real quick on that. Um, otherwise, you're going to run into issue with melting that plastic. There's your Germanian diode in place. So all in all, relatively easy. The only issue I really had was this jumper block. The holes where it comes through, they were relatively tight, so I had to kind of tap it in place. <laughs> just took a, set it like this on a hard surface and took a back of a Phillips screwdriver and just tapped the board gently 
to try to drive the pins and it worked pretty good so just a little tip so yeah on the back of the board here you can see all the solder joints they went real well i always use a, a solder paste um even though you probably don't need to but i always do a little extra and it's just me a little extra cleaning involved trying to get the the rosin you know off the board but uh, otherwise nice clean joints pretty happy how it turned out so there it is the matchbox crystal radio yeah that make a cool science fair thing i think very awesome um but yeah just a real simple layout and like i said i want to probably try to source some of these components and build my own and build my own little prototype board because i got enough circuit board stuff that i can you know lay out some uh designs and then for traces i'll just use a uh, bus wire or some solid core wire probably for the interconnects so pretty neat stuff i love it all righty well there we go <laughs> little guy down there so glad you guys watched this video if you guys are really into crystal radios like i said check out the guy on ebay amazing stuff he's got some really cool entry-level things and all the way to some advanced kits um just to pique your curiosity just some amazing things out there. And if you have any questions about this stuff, just give me a holler. You know, go in the comments below. Let me know what you think. Or if you have a question about the build, um, definitely I'll help you out. All right, guys. Well, big thumbs up if you like the video. Uh, subscribe if you like these do-it-yourself kits. If you're into these crystal radios, number one. Um, I know it's a smaller niche audience, but I really, this is my thing. I mean, I really enjoy building kits and building powerless uh, radio kits are really fun. Um, that, that is just my cup of tea. I really like it. I mean, sure, I have tons of portable radios I could turn on and go, but just something about the magic of listening to a radio station without any batteries. Just, it's just something just something cool. All right. And, yeah, comment below what you think about the little matchbox radio. Um, and if he, I'm going to probably email him, see if he's going to make these more, make a different one or he's going to update this one because this is the smallest one I could find that you could build. I'm sure there's smaller ones out there. And uh, he has that uh, Cape Cod kit, that criticized one. It's about that big. has the same components on a bigger board. And I think instead of using this jumper block, he uses a nice, easy select, you know, a switch, which is really nice. So, you know, one, uh, two position switch, which, you know, goes between the two inductors. I think that'd be nice and easy to use. So there you are. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care and goodbye.